In this video, we will discuss why light slows down in a medium other than free space. We know that if I consider some materials and their respective refractive indices, then these will be the speed of light in those media. Let's consider vacuum. Its refractive index is 1, so the speed of light is exactly C. If I consider air, then it is having a little bit more refractive index than the vacuum. So, we will have the slightly reduced speed of light. If I consider water, then almost one-fourth the speed of light has been reduced. While in glass, it is two-thirds reduced from this equation. And in diamond, is it is having the highest refractive index in the materials, then the speed has almost 60% reduced and the light will travel only with the 40% speed. Now why the speed is reducing when light moves in media other than free space? We will have to take up this thing and for this we will have to understand or we will have to keep the wave nature of light. So it is something like this. That if I consider this is a medium and let's say this medium is a glass. So inside this glass the light is traveling. The light comes with a speed C and hits the surface of this glass. Now the light was supposed to move in the straight line with the same speed c and then it will have to go out exactly with the same speed c but it is not like this what actually happens here that the light actually refracts pins and it goes with the less speed like this and this speed is two-thirds the speed of light. And as it reaches here, then from this point, exactly at the same angle, the light actually again start going with the speed of light. So what actually happens here inside this medium? That the light speed has been reduced and then the light gets their speed back. So what is pushing this light then after the medium? We will have to look here. Now, is like previous, we are having some explanations which are not the complete or they are not the correct explanations. And one of those explanations is that atoms behave like scattering centers. Atoms behave like scattering centers. Like when this light comes in here are atoms and those atoms actually scatter this light and that's why its speed is reduced and it goes when material is finished then it goes with the same speed but this explanation is not right what's the reason for this one that when atoms we consider is the scatter then from this atom the light will scatter this way then it may go this way then go this way it's not necessary to go this way so it will go like a broad distribution and then like this. So it is not necessary that the light will exactly follow this ray path. The second explanation is that light, light is 
absorbed by the atoms of the material and then re-emitted. Now this explanation is also not right because for example this light comes in and it is absorbed by an atom then this atom will not emit the light in the direction in which the photon is coming. It may go in any direction and what will happen that many atoms will absorb, they will emit that light in random direction and what we will have, we will have a glow light inside this glass. But the light will not go like this but we will have a glow of light. So the glass will glow inside, some brightness will be observed inside the glow. So this explanation is also not right. So what's the right explanation? And that will also explain that why the wavelength of light changes and the frequency of light remains the same in this thing. So we go on with this explanation. Let me first write the equation, this equation. Now I can write the C is equal to nu lambda. Now in order to differentiate this V and nu, I am writing this is F lambda. So C is equal, C is equal F lambda. C is the speed of light in vacuum. If frequency will be reduced due to any reason, then lambda will grow and it will keep the speed of light as constant. Or uh, if lambda is reduced, then frequency will grow in order to keep the speed of light constant. But when I come to a medium where I am having V equals F lambda. Now here the speed of light is no not constant because in different media it will be different. So when V lowers, whether frequency lowers or wavelength lowers, are uh, both of them lows. So in the previous video we have explained this thing that frequency is the number of cycles per unit time. The number of cycles from the continuity equation per unit time entering here will be equal to the number of cycles leaving this material. So due to that continuity the frequency will remain constant inside the material as well while wavelength will change. So if this one is reduced and in the media it is always reduced, so the wavelength will actually lowers. The wavelength will be reduced. Consider this thing that when light comes in, then this light is in electromagnetic wave, a transverse electromagnetic wave and this wave will have some frequency and some wavelength. What is actually inside here? Inside the glass, inside the glass we are actually having neutral atoms and there are no free charges because it's a dielectric material. Now consider one atom and we will understand this thing. Now this is the nucleus of that atom and electrons are actually revolving around it. So the electrons may have different orbits and let's say this is an electron which is actually revolving here. This electron is a charged particle and I know that when charged particle moves then they generate current. So it's a current, a tiny loop of current 
and that current is it is an accelerated motion or circular motion then the current will have magnetic field and that will this is just like a tiny electromagnetic loop so this is also having a wave associated with it an electromagnetic wave is associated with this electron as well now when electromagnetic waves come from here this is the external electromagnetic wave this electromagnetic wave actually interacts with this electromagnetic wave this is the electromagnetic wave which is coming from the outside and this is the electromagnetic wave of the electron which is here so both of these two waves actually interact and when they interact we know that whenever two waves are interacting then they interfere whenever two waves interact with each other they interfere if the trough of it is exactly coming on the trough of it then we will have a constructive interference and the resultant wave which will come in here will be actually a high amplitude wave here means they will enhance each other and when the trough of one comes on the crest of the other so we will have means when the top is on the bottom exactly overlapping we will have a destructive interference and we will have nothing over here but normally we don't have a constructive or destructive interference 100% we are having something in between so that will result in the change of wavelength so the incident electromagnetic wave will change its wavelength when it comes here and when it will means here the light is actually traveling with its exact speed of light c inside the material as well but the electromagnetic wave from the electrons is actually reducing it reducing the speed of it and that will cause a change in wavelength and when the material is finished then there is no resistance from the electrons there are no interference with the electron waves there so the speed of light will continue with exactly the speed of light so inside the material actually the waves the external waves of light interact with the internal electromagnetic waves of the electrons which are there and they cause a change in wavelength because v is reduced so wavelength is reduced while the frequency will remains the same and that's the reason that the incoming light actually slows down in a material the net speed of the incoming light slows down while when this resistance is removed or the interference is removed then the electromagnetic wave travels exactly with that speed of light